Shalom. Welcome back. First and foremost, I want to give all glory, praises, and honors to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. I want to give double honors to the apostles, the elders of Great Millstone, and salutations to your acumen pushing this word in sincerity and truth. Back with another quick video. I was watching uh, uh, that guy, he's got pretty popular, that Kevin Samuels, right? And he had a show recently where uh, uh, people were calling in, disagreeing uh, with him about certain things. <clears throat> and the topic was about uh, a man so called cheating. And a woman called in, uh, basically quoting the Bible, talk about man uh, who got more than one woman is committing adultery. And she really didn't understand uh, what adultery is in the Bible, what marriage is in the Bible, which is just a certain, which is uh, some things I'm going to cover pretty basic uh, so you can get an uh, understanding of that. Because woman is quick to say about cheating this and cheating that and don't really understand that at the simplest understanding when a woman, first of all, when a man has sex with a woman, that is what makes uh, a man and a woman married, period. It's not a ceremony. It's not a ring. According to the Bible, sex is what really uh, makes that woman join onto you. All right. So and as far as adultery goes, if a man have has a wife. And then he goes to sleep with a single, another single woman who has not had sex, all right, who's not promised or betroth, betrothed to another man. Guess what? Then he has another wife. And that's not against the law. And that's not adultery. And now I'm going to get the scriptures to, to back this up. But I just want to make that point because uh, this guy is pretty popular. And you got, you know, simple ass Jake talking about cheating. Well, basically, uh, you know, the black woman talking about cheating this and that. But they really don't have any kind of understanding. All right. Because uh, it's a lot of examples of men who had many wives in the Bible. And then you have clear cut examples of adultery as you would have with King David and uh, uh, Bathsheba. But the first scripture I'm going to get is this right, uh, this right here in the book of Genesis, chapter 24 and 67. It says, and Isaac brought her into his mother, mother Sarah, tent and took Rebekah. All right. And she became his wife. She became Isaac's wife in that tent. Why? Because they had sex, man. Okay. That is what made uh, Rebecca his wife. It wasn't a, a ceremony. It wasn't a ring. It wasn't, uh, you know, I'm I's married now. <laughs> is that man having sex with her? You see? And that's an understanding that our people don't have anymore. They, uh, especially these women, they jump from partner to partner to partner. And what they're really doing is committing adultery in a heavy, heavy way. All right. And then these men uh, go from woman to woman to woman. And these women are really other man's women. So at the end of the day, right now in this jacked up society, we have all committed adultery unless you got a true blue <laughs> virgin out there, which uh, is rare for a man uh, to get that in this day and age. Let me read it again. This is Genesis 24 and 67. And Isaac brought her into his mother's Sarah's tent and took and took Rebecca and she became his wife and he loved her. And Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. Right. You see that. And. Uh, next scripture I'm going to get. Is Sirach chapter 36, 24. He that getteth a wife beginneth a possession. All right. So a woman is a possession. A wife is a possession unto a man once he has uh, has sex with her. So, you know, these women, these silly ass women calling into the show talking about, well, if he can cheat, I can cheat. Not really ha having any kind of clue uh, to the to the biblical understanding of that. All right. And they all came to be claimed to be uh, Christians and Catholics, which which goes to show you uh, that these people in these churches uh, have simply no understanding of the Bible, all right, or the God they supposedly serve in the Bible. Let me read this again. Sirach 36, 24. He that get a wife, get a possession, a help like unto himself, and a pillar of rest. And that's what a, a woman is ultimately supposed to be, just a, a help meet, man. All right? Not barking orders, not running a relationship, not uh, being uh, pedestalized, and see, simp as uh, men ha have it nowadays. They they are a possession and a help, right? But let's keep going. 
uh, in the scriptures. Because that woman called in trying to be all, you know, uh, deep and trying to talk about adultery and this and that without having uh, any understanding. And he didn't really, you know, he claimed, that, oh, I grew up in the church and this and that. But uh, as many uh, elders and brothers put, these Christians, these self-proclaimed Christians really don't understand the Bible. All right. Not at a, a, a base level. They really don't get it. Right. They just quote certain pieces of it. Right. Let's go to the book of Leviticus, chapter 20 and 10. We go right to the point. It says, and the man that committeth adultery with another man's wife. So that's that's adultery in a nutshell right there. Me going and getting another man's wife. All right. Even he that committeth adultery with his neighbor's wife, the adulterer and the adulteress shall be surely be put to death all right so you know the, these people that talk about calling in talking about we're separated it, it's just some nonsense because uh, in the eyes of the lord uh you still you are that man's wife so when you leave him and go on to the next uh <laughs> next man the man that you're sleeping with he now then committed adultery because you're not with your original man Right. And you commit adultery because you, you you're not with your original husband. Right. So, you know, it goes on and on and on. But this is just so you, people can get a basic understanding of merit, uh, marriage and adultery, you know. All right. Let's keep uh, let's keep going. This is not going to be long. This is just to get an understanding. Right. Let's get this right here. Leviticus 19 and 20. And whosoever, and whosoever lieth carnally with a woman that is a bondmaid, betrothed to an husband, right? And not at all redeemed, nor freedom given her, she shall be scourged and shall be put to death because she was not free. Right? These women ain't truly single, the single ladies. And that's a fucking fallacy, man. These women ain't virgins. So they, you know, these women are these dumbass songs. I'm a single lady and, you know, uh, you know, I'm playing the field. Oh, it's all bullshit, man. Y'all some whores and adulteresses, according to the scriptures. All right. Because you're truly not single, man. All right. You didn't all had uh, a man, so to speak. Right. So this is the technical uh, breakdown of these scriptures. Especially at the at a biblical at a biblical standard, which uh, you know, which I found funny people calling into that show quoting the Bible, but really not having any understanding uh, to it. You see, because uh, let me read it again. This is Leviticus nineteen and twenty. And whosoever lieth carnally for woman that is a bondman betrothed to her husband, and not at all redeemed nor a freedom given her, she shall be scourged. They should be put. They shall not be put to death because she was not free. And when you go into uh, because uh, when you go into so-called rape, the rape issue, if that is a happen, right? And the woman who is betrothed or promised to a man or has slept with a man, and a man take it anyway, that man is in the wrong. And if she yell and if she put up a fuss. Uh, she showed nothing happened to her because she was forced. And then that man that forced her, uh, he ultimately got to be put to death because he has uh, uh, committed adultery. All right. And he took another man's wife. So that's the basic, uh, basic understanding of that. All right. Now, let's uh, let's get this right here. This is first Samuel. Chapter one and one it says, Now there was a certain man of uh Ramothaz Zelphim of Mount Ephraim, and his name was Elkna, the son of Jeroham, the son of Elihu, the son of Tahu, son of Zuf, and Ephrathite, and he had two wives. The name of one was Hannah, the name of the other was uh Pinina. And Pinina had children, and Hannah had Pinina had children, but Hannah had no children. So this is another example of a man in Samuel that had two wives, man. So having two wives, uh, you know, having two women, uh, you know, uh, ain't going off, man. Where it would be going off is a man took on another uh, woman, 
right? And then he released that woman, which is basically, you know, uh, putting her back out into the field to be with other men. Well, that's your second wife. Now, is you know, you you causing more and more adultery. That's why in this day and age, it's not always prudent to multiply wives. All right, or to be having a whole bunch of uh, women, because really, you know, that shit is really going off. You you creating harlots to get to actual have that understand. You're creating harlots, man, straight up and down when you do things like that. Especially you sleeping with these women and then you cast them to the side. Uh, she, you know, you're that woman's uh, so-called husband at that point, because this world doesn't look at it like that. But that's really the understanding and how deep this thing is. You see, if you're going to judge this thing by the, uh, the quote unquote uh, biblical law. Uh, let's get one more. This is Exodus 21 and 10. It says, if he if he take him another wife, her food, her raiment and her duty of marriage shall not shall he not diminish. Meaning you got to take care of these women getting all these wives and women and you can't take care of them. And that shit off as hell, too, man. In the New Testament, because of uh, the time period period uh, we're in, it says, uh, you know, he that has a wife be as though he doesn't have one. Because what, first and foremost, if you're a man of this Lord, your first priority got to be this work and this knowledge. All right. Verse 11. And if he do not these three unto her, then shall she go out free with, without money. Right. If you can't take care of them wives, then at that point you would have to uh, release her. All right. And that's how we're going to we're going to go back to this as a people. All right. We're going to get back to this. But I just want to share this because, you know, everybody called himself an expert in the Bible. But that's really, uh, you know, what marriage is, what adultery is, according uh, to the scriptures. All right. Defined by the scriptures. But that's the point. I'm going to give all glory, praises, honesty. How about you? Shalom the next time.